Another way to do emboss resist is to create your own patterns and colors on your cardstock first before embossing. To begin, here are the supplies you'll need. You'll need a Versamark pad. You'll also need an anti-static pad. You're going to need a few ink colors, and here I'm using the Memento Dewdrops and also a Memento ink pad in Potter's Clay. I've got Desert Sand, Tangelo, and Cantaloupe for my dewdrops. You're going to need a sponge dauber, some clear embossing powder, a couple of chunky stamps, and what I've done in this case is since I'm going to use two flowers, I put the small flower on one side of the block and the large flower on the other side of the block. Then I'm also going to add a background pattern in there. So I've picked a background stamp and I've picked some tuxedo black ink. <clears throat> You'll also need an embossing gun and some white cardstock. To begin, I'm going to start with my Memento cantaloupe pad. And I'm going to randomly just put different shapes, well, the same shape, but turn my ink pad as I go to put different marks all over the piece of cardstock using the cantaloupe color. And you want to make sure that you keep turning that little pad because you don't want it to be all consistent. If they all went the same way, it wouldn't look as good as having them mixed up. Then I'm going to add a little bit of tangelo. You can see I'm continuing to turn my ink pad as I place it down. And then I'm going to finish it off with a little bit of the desert sand. All right. Now these inks will dry a little bit lighter and when they're all dry, then you're going to go on to your next step. But through the magic of television, I've already created one and trimmed it to size and now it's all dry and ready to go on to the next step. My next step is going to begin by rubbing the anti-static pad over my piece of cardstock. I want to make sure that there's no oil or nothing wet on there that's going to attract embossing powder to anywhere except for where I stamp my Versamark. And now I'm going to stamp my three flowers. I'm going to do a large one, a small one, and a large one. And it is a little bit difficult to see where you're stamping. Sometimes you have to hold the cardstock at a different angle to see exactly where that Versamark is. So I've got one flower. Now I'm going to stamp my small one. And I'm going to stamp one more large one. All right, next I'm going to add some embossing powder to that. And again, I'm working over a sheet of paper so I can easily return the unused powder back into the jar. And now I've got embossing powder on those three chunky flowers and I'm just gonna blow over it to make sure that there's no excess powder anywhere that isn't on those stamped images. <sighs> And you may notice I don't blow directly over my table because I don't want to blow all the excess embossing powder away. All right. Now that we have that put away, let me heat that embossing powder. And we'll see those images start to come up. Now this will be just a little bit more dramatic to your eye as it turns shiny, you're going to be able to see them much better because it really makes the color pop that's underneath. See how that changes? I'm going to use a piece of scratch paper. Flatten out my image a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to use some potter's clay with my sponge dauber and I'm going to run the sponge dauber over the ink pad to really saturate that dauber 
and then I'm going to start pounding potter's clay all over my images. Now you can really see the images starting to pop. Next I'm going to add a little crackle background. And I'm going to do that by inking up my crackle background stamp onto my Memento ink. But I'm going to stamp off once because I don't want it to be quite as dark. And there I'm going to add a little bit there. And I'm just randomly turning as I go. And there, now I've added some background to it. Now the last step to really make this pop is to grab a piece of paper towel and now you're going to rub all over the surface of those flowers and see how that ink just comes right off of the areas that are already embossed. And it leaves behind your beautiful patterned flowers that you created using your dewdrop pads. Now I've created a card using a piece that I had done a little bit earlier. And one of the things I wanted to show you about this card is I used one of the background papers from the Stamp TV kit, from the uh, Floral Elegance kit. And what, what happened was the background paper didn't really match my potter's clay as much as I wanted it to. So all I did was take that same dauber and before I attach this piece of paper, I just daubed potter's clay ink all over it. Then I added a little bit of memento tuxedo black, and I stamped the crackle background on there as well. And that really brought it all together. Try adding patterned background stamps or other doodles that you create to your cardstock before embossing, and create an emboss-resist style all your own.